So the same thing always happens when a new device launches. The media gets review units ahead of the official launch and we get to use them while we write our review. Then the press embargo lifts, every outlet posts their reviews and videos at the same time, writers and commenters go back and forth, and it's a huge frenzy of opinion and buzz for about a day. And then it all goes away. Sure, there's some follow-up coverage, but after that initial blast, almost no one revisits the device to see how well it's aged. Because we're all on to the next big thing already. So let's do something about it. Let's kick off the first smartphone re-review of 2014 by taking another look at the best camera phone of 2013. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. This is the Nokia Lumia 1020, and this is episode 27 of After the Buzz. Even before Nokia's acquisition by Microsoft, the two companies' fates were inextricably intertwined. So it's impossible to talk about how well the Lumia 1020 has aged without talking about how well Windows Phone has aged. This part of the story has its ups and downs, some of which we covered in our After the Buzz for the Lumia 925. On the downside, some features, like the social hubs, don't work nearly as well as they used to, thanks to the networks they rely on having evolved more quickly than Windows Phone. And while the platform's flat, minimalistic interface was still reasonably fresh when the 1020 launched back in the summertime, it's starting to feel a little stagnant next to iOS and Android, both of which have seen significant look and feel upgrades in the time since. Thankfully, Nokia and Microsoft used that time to improve other, more important aspects of the software experience. The Windows Store featured 100,000 apps at the time the Lumia 1020 launched, a number which has since doubled. And the revised count isn't just filler. Long-awaited titles like Instagram, Vine, and Snapchat have given Windows Phone more legitimacy, while Nokia's excellent suite of custom apps have also seen regular updates. And the new Lumia Black and GDR3 enhancements have made everything from multitasking to notifications to the glance screen just a little more useful. While we'd have liked a few more aesthetic tweaks, these improvements are welcome, and they run very well on the 1020. Updates like these have also arrived often enough to make us confident that Nokia isn't just going to abandon 1020 users now that it's no longer the newest Windows phone on the block. It says to us that this flagship was built to last. The hardware says the same thing. Taylor Martin goes into detail on this in his durability report for the 1020, but it's enough to say that you should feel quite comfortable carrying the device without a case. Taylor's Gorilla Glass 3 shows some scratches on its top-level coating after six months, but our Boston test device is in near pristine condition, despite never having been given any protection, and despite having been locked into and out of Nokia's camera grip more than a few times, a case that's none too gentle on the polycarbonate. We still wish a cyan option was available in the States, but the phone's yellow color, should you opt for it, still catches eyes on the street. And it still prompts people to ask if it's that Nokia with the insane camera. Which, of course, it is. We called the Lumia 1020's 41-megapixel camera the best smartphone shooter of 2013. And despite the fact that competitors have continued upping their game with enhanced low-light performance and optical stabilization, it's probably a safe bet that the 1020's camera will remain untouchable through much of this coming year. Nokia has continued to enhance its software, bringing the SmartCam and ProCam together under one app and bundling in some automatic shooting modes to make it a little easier to use for amateur photographers. We've also seen the addition of RAW format support for the pros out there, and also the fun Nokia Refocus app for those sitting somewhere in between. The camera isn't perfect. Its output is still a little noisier than it should be. It can still fall victim to a too shaky hand, and even PureView technology has trouble with very dark situations. The camera app itself is also still slow to open and slow to save. But used with care, its performance in most situations is just outstanding. And the manual controls are more intuitive than any other smartphone camera. Here's some of the best of what we've been able to capture with the 1020 over the past few months. With the possible exception of the 808 PureView, it's still the best camera we've ever used on a mobile phone. Performance elsewhere is just what you'd expect from a well-made product. Just like it was back in the summer, voice quality is excellent, the speakerphone is loud, the display vibrant and beautiful, 
and almost no lag has crept into the day-to-day -day software experience. Also in the US, the 1020's exclusive carrier, AT&T, has given us nothing but excellent data speeds over LTE in the Northeast. In fact, the only way this phone hasn't aged well may be in terms of battery life. We've had inconsistent luck with Windows Phone in this area, and the 1020 is no exception. It's unclear if a particular app is at fault, or if we're just taking too many photos every day, but it's been tough to get through a full day without the camera grip and its additional battery juice. Your mileage, as always, may vary. With the arrival of the monstrous Lumia 1520, which we reviewed not long ago, the 1020 is no longer the king of the Windows Phone mountain, at least in terms of specs. And assuming it's not delayed by the Microsoft Nokia deal, the 1020's replacement might arrive sometime next summer. But does that mean you should hold off on buying the Lumia 1020 if you want a best-in-class camera experience on your modern smartphone? From what we can see, not at all. Despite a few hiccups, the Windows Phone platform is as healthy as it's ever been. PureView camera technology is in no danger of being eclipsed. And despite its legacy internals, the 1020 still handles the day-to-day -day job of being a mobile phone with a plum. At the price the phone is going for with a contract, we think smartphone shutterbugs will be very well served by the Lumia 1020, and we're happy to continue to recommend it to Windows Phone buyers everywhere. Hope you enjoyed the first smartphone re-review of 2014. If you're interested in tablets, Taylor Martin just completed episode 26 of After the Buzz on the new Nexus 7. Go check that out at pocketnow.com or here on our channel page. And don't forget to like this video if you did enjoy it, and leave a comment down below. Follow us on social media if you want to see more from Pocket Now, especially in the week ahead, as we'll be covering CES 2014 live from Las Vegas. In the meantime, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. I want to thank you very much for watching this video, and we'll see you very soon.